This is KGW News at Sunrise. Good morning. Thanks for getting up with us on this Sunday morning. I'm Tim Gordon. This morning on Sunrise, the ongoing effort to improve safety and reduce gun violence in Old Town. Portland is beefing up police presence and closing off specific areas to traffic. We hear from the community about it. Plus, in the battle against the fentanyl epidemic, Oregon and Washington get some help from the federal government. But before we get to all that, let's check in with Rod Hill for a quick look at the forecast. Good morning, Rod. Uh, good morning. If you haven't heard, it's going to be a warm one. Yesterday, the airport just made it to 80. Today, we just might make it to 90, forecasting highs in the upper 80s. Uh, here's that Rose City camera I showed you a moment ago. You can tell it's a light wind. Look how glassy and quiet the Willamette River is. 55 degrees. This is kind of a cool early morning look because you can see the uh, reflected sunlight on the waters, the Tilcom. Uh, Crossing there. This is from the uh, camera that's at the Portland Spirit Landing, but beautiful, beautiful clear sky morning. Temperatures 40s for some of you. There's Hillsborough at 47, Sherwood at 48 degrees this morning. Gresham's holding at 50. Could be some east winds that will become noticeable during the afternoon out in East Multnomah County, by the way. There's Salem at 49, and down in Corvallis, it's uh, 47 degrees. Our planner today shows a very summer like day. 75 degrees at noon, so really great stuff this morning. But you'll feel it get hot for a couple of hours this afternoon, forecasting highs. Of of 88 to 89 here in the Rose City. Tim. All right, Rod, we will take it. Well, a quick reminder this morning, and it is a traffic alert for you. Interstate 84 near I-205 closed in both directions this morning. This roadway will be shut down all day long as TriMet installs a bridge near the Gateway Transit Center. The construction is part of TriMet's Better Red project, which is a four-year, $215 million plan to extend the MAX's red line. The interstate is expected to open up in time for the morning commute tomorrow at 4 a.m. And new this morning, Portland homicide detectives have been on the scene of a fatal shooting for the last few hours. This happened just after 3.30 this morning. Investigators don't have a lot of details for us right now, but say the victim died at the scene along Northeast Sandy Boulevard. This happened just outside of Howard Johnson's hotel there, but we don't know if that is part of the case or just a coincidence. And now to Old Town, and this weekend is the first time a new plan is in place from the city of Portland. The goal, to help deal with the gun violence in one of the most troubled neighborhoods in the city. We're seeing beefed up police presence in Old Town. Art Edwards takes us there. The plan will put six officers and a sergeant on the detail here in Old Town. There will also be barricades that will be put up in a 12 block area to keep cars from driving around. Because there are more and more people who are returning to Old Town, there's a focus on safety. I'm not surprised at all. I think it's definitely been needed for a while, so I'm looking forward to the change. Meg Gibson works at Silver Dollar Pizza on Northwest 5th. It's just inside the area that will be off limits to cars and will have the additional police presence. I think this neighborhood has been wanting that for a long time, regardless of your political views. I think that everyone is on the same page in that regard. And I think having the police presence will just eliminate and tone down some of the issues we've been having. The issues include an increase in violence in Old Town. The area has seen an average of four and a half shootings a month since September of last year. And since the start of this year, seven people have died in shootings, stabbings, or assaults. The city made the announcement of the safety plan on Tuesday. We are in this together. Uh, we are in this together as neighbors. We are in this together as uh, operators. I need, we need, this, this, this is a team approach. People spending time here like the idea of a safety plan. There needs to be a lot of safety restrictions and things put into place here because it's crazy over here, yeah. It's always crazy over here. It's not just the additional police officers and the street closers that you'll be seeing here in Old Town. The mayor's plan also calls for additional lighting to help people feel safer. Reporting from Old Town, Art Edwards, KGW News. Well, it may be fall, but we still have wildfires burning around the state. The Oregon National Guard will continue to work with fire crews at the Double Creek Fire burning in eastern Oregon. The Guard first got there on September 10th. They're offering security and are stationed at roadblocks in the area. The Double Creek Fire is the largest fire in our state. It's burned nearly 158,000 acres so far. It's a lot of land. Well, Oregon and Washington are getting a new federal grant to tackle the fentanyl epidemic. Fentanyl is a synthetic opioid, and it's the number one killer of people 18 to 45 across the U.S. Oregon will get more than $20 million. $15 million of that will go to the Oregon Health Authority. 
Washington will receive more than $27 million. The money will go toward expanding uh, drug treatment and recovery support. It will also make the life-saving drug, the antidote Narcan, more accessible. Well, for the last couple years, Oregon has ranked high when it comes to the number of people struggling with addiction. And at the same time, the state is right near the bottom when it comes to meeting the needs and treating this disease. Our Alma McCarty spoke with people in recovery and advocates also at Saturday's Walk for Recovery. Saturday morning at Pioneer Courthouse Square, people in active recovery. Being able to connect with people that are just like me and understanding that I'm not alone. And those who love someone struggling with addiction. The journey to get there is hard and it shouldn't be hard. Gathered together to celebrate what recovery means to them while addressing the current obstacles of getting to that place. This is a crisis. There is a solution, and when we, we uh, implement that solution, all of Oregon is going to be lifted up. A new OHSU analysis highlights the problems and gaps in Oregon's addiction recovery system, pointing out the lack of prevention specialists, of addiction counselors, of facilities and community centers. Mike Marshall, executive director of Oregon Recovers, said the statistics are staggering. The numbers are glaring. But they are, um, they're now a roadmap, and so that's really exciting. Marshall explains Portland's Walk for Recovery is one of five across the state. Participants proudly promoting their recovery journey. That's hugely important, and their family gets to walk alongside them and be proud of them. And that, sorry, I get emotional every time I talk about it. That is so amazing. You, that dynamic is, is so extraordinary. Brandon Lyle entered into recovery in 2017 and hopes his own lived experience can guide others and show people they're not alone. So when I got introduced, I just thought it was just a thing that you did because you had to go to court. <laughs> That's what you had to do because your probation officer told you to do. But like when I actually committed to it, it was such a beautiful thing. It was like finding God. Pam Connolly is a founding member of Oregon Moms for Addiction Recovery. These people give me hope. These people give me hope that my, my child can be out here someday too. Her son suffers from substance abuse disorder and has been in recovery for five months, but getting help and treatment wasn't easy. Somebody who's sober it can call every single day for a month and get nowhere. How is somebody in active addiction supposed to get help? Through walks like this one, they're building community while working to fight Oregon's addiction crisis. Walking today so someone else has access to recovery down the line, whether it's their kid, their neighbor, or someone they'll never know, like to be empowered that way is just, um, it is so moving and motivating. In downtown Portland, Alma McCarty, KGW News. All right, well, this is new video from the Columbia River. Another ship called the Alert got lifted out of the water on Saturday. A different ship known as the Sucarissa was lifted earlier this week. And throughout this process, thousands of gallons of diesel fuel and oily waste have also been removed from the water. Now, the two ships got to Portland in 2006. After sitting off Hayden Island for more than a decade now, both ships sunk last year. The Oregon Department of State Lands is working with the Coast Guard on that cleanup. Officials say people were living on the ships. They were not sinking on their own, and the and the actual uh, we know actually from the the Sacarissa because it had been raised, and, we, and and when the Coast Guard raises it, then they patch holes so they can float it and tow it. And that one actually sank because someone who was salvaging on the vessel cut through a, a pipe. Uh, Ryan says he's not sure why the alert sank. Officials say it'll take several more days to complete the investigation on that. But both ships sank before any coordinated effort was put together to tow them away. Well, there's a new distillery in town with a unique tasting room. Coming up next, we'll head on over to the grand opening of the gin brand, owned in part by a Hollywood superstar.